Okay, welcome to our awesome lesson for Everyday Math, Lesson 7.9. So, today's lesson is one where I wish that you guys were in person for because there are some things that we need to do. So, I'm going to use the data that I had from last year. I'm going to use some information that I have um, based on my own measurements as well. So, I will share some of that with you and we're going to kind of make do with this. Okay, guys? So first it says use with a, work with a partner to use a tape measure to find the length of your partner's fathom, cubit, great span, and joint in standard units. So, well, what does that mean? Look at the picture. So a fathom is when you measure your arms, and I'm going to kind of stand up, well, sit down, I guess, from fingertip uh, all the way to fingertip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to just use a meter stick, a yardstick because that's easiest for me. And I see that here's, let's do 37. Plus about 13. So it's about 40 inches ish. 40 inches. Wait, no, 37 plus 50 inches. I lied. It's about 50 inches. Lord, help me to testify. It's about 50 inches. 37 plus 13 is 50. Okay. And you know what? Just because I want to double check myself, I'm going to get a tape measure and we're going to double check because, yeah, let's see. All right. We're going to keep going. Okay. Let's see. From there to my elbow is 47. So right here, this is 47. So keep that in mind, 47. 47 plus, it's really hard to do this by yourself, 16. 47 plus 16, all right. 47 plus 16. <sighs> That's 13, 63, 63 inches. You know, it's funny because I'm five one and a quarter, so kind of like five two, so it's kind of 62 inches. And they say that fingertip to fingertip is your height on most people. So it's kind of funny. All right, a cubit to the nearest half inch. Okay, here we go. The cubit goes from the tip of your fingers to the bottom of your elbow. Tip of my fingers to the bottom of my elbow. My elbow stops right there at 16 inches, okay? Now, your great span, your great span is if you take your hand and you open it as wide as it goes, okay? As wide as it goes, from the tip of your thumb to the tip of your pinky. So for this one, I'm actually gonna use my whiteboard because I think that's gonna help me. I'm gonna spread my hand and I'm gonna draw a line right here and right here because it's gonna be hard to measure unless I do that. And then I can take my tape measure and do that, right? So here we go. And we're measuring that to the nearest fourth of an inch, okay? Well, it's right at eight. Awesome, that was easy, eight inches. And finally, your finger joint, it's to the nearest one eighth of an inch. That means if I take my um, middle knuckle, so it's gonna do your middle finger knuckle, and I'm gonna measure from my, from my middle knuckle to the end here. And so for this one, I'm just gonna use a ruler to the nearest eighth of an inch. So here's my ruler. It lines the zero up right the, with the end of my knuckle. It looks like it's almost one and a half, actually. Almost one and a half. Let me double check with this just to make sure. Yeah, it's almost one and a half. Here we go, right at the end. So I'm actually gonna say that's one and three eighths because it stops right there at that line. So my finger joint, is one and three eighths okay now we have to find our class data set so if you were in person the way that i would do this is i would have each person be able to put up their cubic great span and joint length on here um we would actually do a data grid that goes along with it so what we're going to do is i'm going to give you some data that my class used last year. So the cubit length in inches, we're gonna go um, 
Well, let me look at their data real quick. Hold on just a second. I want to make sure I'm looking at the right stuff. All right, my qubit length, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say the highest that we had was because it's nearest half inch was 19. 18 and a half, 18, 17 and a half, 17, 16 and a half, 16, 15, 14. Okay, so that's how I'm going to number it. And these are my data points. 14 and a half had two. 15 had three. 15 and a half had five. 16 had three. 16 and a half had one. 17 had seven. One person had 18 and one had 18 and a half. That was one of my really tall boys with the really long arms. Mm -hmm. All right, take a moment, pause right here, and I want you to put this data on your page. All right, the great span. So again, this is the great span that is from your fingertip to fingertip in the nearest fourth of an inch. Okay, the fourth of an inch. So the biggest was nine. We had one at nine, by the way. Uh, let's see, so this would be eight, seven, and this technically was six and one fourth. Okay, we didn't have any of that one. We had one at six and a half, two at six and three fourths, four at seven and one fourth, Two at seven and three fourths. Six at eight. Two at eight and a fourth. Four at eight and a half. And one at eight and three fourths. Again, take a moment, make sure your data matches mine. All right, what I did is I went ahead and I put the joint link on there for you. I labeled from one to one and seven eighths, just by eighths, because that's what we measured it in. You have three at one eighths. One at two eighths, but uh, one and two eighths. Five at one and three eighths. Five at one and four eighths. Four at one and five eighths. Three at one and six eighths. And two at one and seven eighths. Again, pause and make sure your data matches mine. Okay, so now we get into the meat of it. Now it gets to the hard part, guys. Just being completely honest. This is where we're going to actually use the numbers to answer some questions. So these data charts can show me a lot of different things. I can tell you who had the largest, greatest, uh, the great span, the smallest great span. I can tell you the difference between the two. I can tell you which um, joint length was the most. So if everyone put their middle finger joint together, which one was the most common, right? So 
these are things that we're going to work on um, using the next little part. So number six says, use the evening out strategy to find a typical measurement for your class. It says to remember to even out the data, add all of the values, and then divide by the total number of data points. So this is where you're going to find the mean. So what's going to happen is I want you to see if you can find the mean on the great span data. So you're going to work on great span. I'm going to work on the other one and we're going to come back with our answers. So looking at great span, add each of your data points together. Divide by the total number there are. All right. Everyone understand? All right. Here we go. I'm going to pause the video. I want you to tell me what is the great span um, mean? What is the great span mean? All right, your answer should have been about seven ish, seven and three fourths ish, ish. Okay, seven and three fourths. All right, let's check the joint data. I hope that you paused, by the way, to find that answer. The way that I did is I added everything up and then I divided, right? My joint data, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you this one. And I'm going to say that my data is going to be 1 and 4 eighths. Again, ish. All right, how much longer is the typical great span than the typical joint? So this minus this, seven and three fourths minus one and four eighths. Do the math. What is seven and three fourths minus one and four eighths? All right, here we go. Seven and three fourths minus one and four eighths. I'm going to write it over here. And I know that my common denominator is going to be eight. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to six eighths. Multiply by two, right? So seven and six eighths minus one and four eighths. Six eighths minus four eighths is two eighths. Seven minus one is six. So your answer should be six and two eighths of an inch. And finally, if everyone in your class had the typical great span measurement and you all lined up one of your hands from pinky to pinky, what would the total distance be? So basically, if every student in our class, and there are 23 of them, had seven and three fourths great span, what would the total be? Multiply it. What is 23 times seven and three fourths? All right, 23 times seven. And then 23 times three fourths. Let's find my answers. 23 times seven I know is 161. Seven times three is 21, carry my two. Seven times two is 14 plus two is 16. 23 times three, uh, 23 over one times three fourths. 69 over four, I'm gonna rename that. 69 divided by four, one, two left over. Four goes into 29 seven times, one left over. So 17 and one fourth. 161 plus 17 and one fourth is 100. 78 and one fourth inches. Whew. That should have been your final answer. If you got that, great. If you didn't, it's okay. There are a lot of little mistakes that you could have made. I hope that you found your answer as I was redoing the problem with you. Okay. Now, you guys have had a very, very long day with this lesson. I know that it was a very challenging lesson because you're not here to do the measurements with me. I tried to make it engaging. I hope that you enjoyed. This is something where you just have to know how to find the mean, median, and mode. I know that we've worked really hard on that. If you feel like you have no idea what these things are, 
ask. I have resources and we can redo some of the things with you, okay? Have a great day, guys, and I will see you later.